So a question that has plagued mankind since the beginning, what is alignment? Well, I got this one, and this is a piece of cake, I got this one wrapped up. Alignment's very simple. Uh, you got your caster, which is like this. You got your camber, which is one of, one of these. And then you got the other one, which is toes, which they can do this. That's, that's it, it's donuts. So the donuts rolling down the street, you just got to kind of point in the right direction, otherwise you're going to have a tricky situation. So that's like toe out, toe in. You got, you got this is the caster, which is great. And then uh, you got like the demon camber, like the Japanese drift cars. That's like two donuts pointing right, the tops pointing right at each other. You're going to wear those tires out real quick, though. That's alignment. That's it. That's all you need to know. I'm Matt. I'm Steve. And I'm Chris. We're, We're car, car guys. guys all the way. We like V8s, turbo fours, Imports, domestics, all makes, all models. If it's got a motor, we're in. And we're going to try to make it go faster. We've been at this a long time. But we're still finding stuff that we just don't know. So come with us as we build some cars. We're going to go talk to the pros. And we're going to talk to enthusiasts like you. And together, we'll tackle all sorts of projects throughout New England. We'll show you how they do it. How we do it. And how you can do it in your own garage. On a budget that hopefully we can all afford. This, this is, is Garage X. X. Real cars, real people, real budgets. Last time you saw us do a classic string alignment and then we used the ART laser string to set toe on the truck. This time around, I'm gonna use the Watkins smart camber gauge and show you guys how to do a caster camber adjustment on your own vehicle. Then we're gonna get the Longacre toe plates. We'll adjust the toe on my Volvo nice. and see where we're at. I'm gonna find out which one of you owes me a beer pizza. Let's chew on them apples. Let's get to it. Back. Consistency is the name of the game. If you can't get a consistent reading, you'll never get the alignment right. But you need to do the things to build in the consistency so the tool can give you the right answers. And I've got some steps for you, some simple steps. So step one, you're gonna sweep the floor. Get all the debris off the floor. You're not helping yourself if you've got grit and dirt and stuff down there. You, you, you know, you're working on the shop floor. You want it as clean as possible so everything's sitting just as smooth as possible. Step two, level the vehicle. The most invaluable piece of equipment that we've got is this little Bosch laser level. It's been fantastic. You know, you set it on the floor, you turn it on, it gives you a horizontal and a perpendicular plane to work off of. I didn't believe this thing at first. I had no idea how not level the floor in the shop is. It looks level, it feels level, but no, I mean, we've got like several inches of difference between one end of the car and the other end of the car. So get the level. You saw the pads that we built, um, get a whole box of linoleum tiles that you can use as shims. You're probably going to need some sheet metal that you can cut to make thinner shims. But between the sheet metal, the linoleum, and the wooden blocks, you should have enough adjustability in there to get everything leveled up to the highest wheel. That'll also give you the, the space you need underneath so you can get to the adjustments so you can work on the thing without having to be too jammed against the floor. All right, once you get the vehicle level, you're gonna wanna lube those spin plates, all right? We're just using two linoleum tiles on top of each other. I found that the best, best stuff for it is that high temp, high pressure axle grease. That's it, it works awesome. You want the tile that's under the tire to move with the tire. That's gonna be important when we take our measurements for the caster adjustment. Now remember, we're not on an alignment rack, we're up on wooden stands and linoleum tiles. Be careful, I don't want a car coming down on any of you guys. The process of getting the truck level in here really isn't as hard or as complicated as I was making it out to be in my head. Uh, no, you don't need to go get a 14 foot beam level. That's just silly. The laser level is my tool of choice for this. It's the quickest, easiest way to do this. Um, remember, up front, under your two front tires, you're gonna have that turntable that we made out of the two linoleum tiles with the grease in between it. So at a bare minimum, the front tires are gonna be up that thickness. We chose to put the blocks that we made underneath, and that's gonna give us a little more room to get in there and work on the truck and make those adjustments. And because those blocks are there, we actually had to shim the back tires up a little bit just so that we could make this truck level. I'm gonna start by leveling it four to aft, front to back. So I'm gonna pick a spot on, next to the truck, a common spot, to put my laser level. I'm gonna actually rotate that laser level from that common spot, point it at the back tire, take my measurement off the pad, point it at the front tire, take my measurement off the pad, and then I'm gonna shim either the front or the back. In this case, I'm gonna be shimming the front tire in order to make that measurement the same for both wheels. Once those measurements are the same, the truck is actually level forward to aft, and then I go to the front of the vehicle, 
I shoot my laser level right down the middle of the truck and I can shim side to side to make sure that this truck is sitting level and in both left to right and front to back. So this truck is level front to back. Now all I gotta do is level it out side to side. Next step, set the brake. Not the parking brake, the actual brake. If you don't set the brake, the wheels, the front wheels, as you're turning them to try to take measurements, they actually, it actually forces some rotation into them. If that wheel's rotating, then your tool's not stationary and you're not getting good readings. You won't get a consistent reading. You won't be able to get what your caster number really is. That's important. Set that brake. Before you start making any adjustments, taking any measurements, get everything loose, get everything lubricated. I actually took bolts right out of the control arms. We only put them in last winter, but I tell you what, they were stuck hard, even with anti-seize and grease and everything else that we've used in there. In up here in New England with the winter and the salt, it's bad, it's bad, and we know that. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are in the same situation. Disassemble, lubricate, reassemble. Make sure everything's free. Because if you don't, what you're gonna end up finding is you're gonna be reefing on these bolts, trying to, to make a change. And you know what's gonna happen? Something's gonna break. All right, after you make your changes, it's really important that you jounce the suspension. It helps everything settle. It helps the, the suspension take the changes that you're making. And if you don't jounce it, you're not gonna get a consistent reading. The, the suspension's gonna be sprung a little bit and until it bounces, it won't take that settle back where it's gonna be when you're on the road. So jounce the suspension. This is an iterative process. You do your caster and camber first, then you set your toe. You may, depending on how far out you were originally, have to go back through and reset your caster camber and your toe again. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but I tell you what, it's work that will pay off in the long run. You do this, you get your pre-alignment right, and when it comes off that rack, it's gonna be awesome. Perfect, I'm right under the tire. That's beautiful. All right, and then I'm just gonna do is check this front one, see where we're at here. So this is the Watkins Smart Camber 2 gauge, and I actually sprung for the optional hands-free adapter, which is the extra two feet on the bottom. Um, this is gonna read the angle of the wheel to give us the ability to measure caster and camber. These long feet actually lock into the inside of the wheel and and essentially press fit it to the wheel so you don't have to hold it up against it like a, like a straight edge. Um, that will allow me to get in here and make changes while the level is on the wheel so I can see what I'm doing in real time, supposedly. I'm having a little trouble with this, getting this to stay put though. I'm trying to... I found a little trick that right. you can use when you're what do you got? adjusting this. All right. If you bring this top pin up just above the uh, edge uh, of the rim, the okay. lip of the rim, yeah. and you can just put a little tension on it, yeah. And just lock oh, it right in there see, like that. That's perfect. Yeah, that works really well. And now it's locked in. I can make my adjustments on the inside. As long as I don't, you know, knock into it, it's going to stay where it is. It's going to give me a consistent reading, and it'll allow me to set my caster. All right. So I'm at two right now. Two point one. All right. I'm shooting two. for point three. It's a long ways to go. Yeah. I see things moving. So much easier than going to the Whew, not so bad. <laughs> All right, so this is the, the caster adjustment method or, or, or measuring the caster with the smart camber gauge. And it's based off of using uh, two different measurements. You, you steer you know, one way 20 degrees, you steer the other way 20 degrees. And the difference in the, the camber angle is used to calculate how much caster you have. Caster and camber are going to be working together and on an alignment rack you're going to be able to see in real time the changes that you're making so it's going to be a lot easier to set uh, both your caster and camber to where you want to be uh, on an alignment rack than, than here where we got to set the camber and then check the caster and then make adjustments to caster but then check your camber. It's, it's going to be this iterative process. I don't know. So when you adjust your caster it affects your camber adjustment right this tool would work really well on like my yugo it'd be great because you put an adjusting bolt in there you turn it till you get the right camber you want and you're done i mean there's no caster adjustment but on this truck it's going to be a very difficult setup we can give it a shot at the very least i want to see where my caster is at and i'd like the two sides to be close because if they're not close you're going to get caster steer you're actually it's going to cause the vehicle to pull but let's okay. give it a shot let's see what we can do all right problem that we're having seems to be um, how do I know what 20 degrees is? We took the plate out 
Um, I've got my carpenter level down the side here, giving me a, a parallel line, a line parallel to the truck. And I'm going to make marks on the floor so we have reference marks. I'm going to mark out 20 degrees both ways. And, uh, and then we'll put the plates back under it and see, see how close we can get. And we need our two 20 degree lines. Nice. All right, Chris, can you turn the wheel towards me? A little bit more. Ooh, I like that. All right, let it relax. I'm at 0.6. So this gives us the first measurement, and then we'll go back the other way, take a second measurement, and then the difference between the two, we can use those to calculate caster. I take it that didn't work so well. Back to straight. Oh, I see what's happening. <laughs> because my truck's lowered, I'm hitting the fender well and it's, <laughs> it's popping it off the wheel. <laughs> it's hitting right there. It's poop, flipping it off. That'll do it. So now what do I do? <laughs> I can't I can't make 20 like that. I mean at best I'm just I'm approximating. That's all I can do. That's silly. Alright. I'm gonna set camber on the other side. And I'll see if I'm missing something here. We'll come back to this later. That's that's not working. Here, here, and that you stand them up here against the wheel. Yeah, just enough room, and we do the same on the other side, and then we string, string them across. String see if there's them. any difference. Yeah, makes sense to me. Cool. So go ahead, hook that on the the top slot. Top slot. Yeah. All right, it's there. With toe plates, the difference between the front of the wheels and the back of the wheels is going to give you overall toe. And that's how much the, the front of these wheels are either pointed in towards each other or pointed out away from each other. All right. You may want to have something to write this with. Oh, Chris? Yes. Did we center your steering wheel? Probably a good time to mention. Yes. Before you start this process, you got to make sure the steering wheel is centered. Exactly centered. That's huge. Easy enough. That's probably something I can do. Not well, but you know, I can I can phone it in and just kind of, you know, like say I did it and this I'm like there. And you're like, you go, you look, you look, and I'm doing it. You look away, I'm not doing it. I'm not, probably not doing it. 71 and a quarter. I got 71 and well, right now I've got like 71. So you get a quarter inch difference between front and rear. Yeah. So they're calling for one sixteenth of an inch total toe. And we got like a quarter. So it's the sixteenth of Let's get the other side broken free and then uh, and then we'll take a final measurement and I can have you adjust while I read it. Yeah. Cool. Hey, nice pushing from here. Like that? Yeah. All the urethanes. Yeah, fantastic. Straight from Viva Performance. All right. Good choice. So I'm at 71 and an eighth in the front, total toe. And then in the back, I'm at 71 and 3 sixteenths. So I'm, I'm exactly 1 16th of an inch. Uh, towed in for total tow, which is where we want to be. Sorry, I fell asleep. I was having a little nap. Oh. As I'm sure you saw, we had all kinds of trouble getting the smart camber gauge to work with the shop truck. And I was a little confused because 
that tool had come highly recommended to us as a great tool for setting caster and camera on our vehicles. So we got a chance to speak to Smart Racing Products CEO, Craig Watkins. He was really helpful, the guy was terrific, and he gave us a couple pointers. I was asking him, I'm like, Craig, what's going on? I put this tool on the truck, and as you guys saw, when I went to turn the wheel to get 20 degrees to get that measurement, it was hitting the fender well, uh, the fender itself, and falling right off the side of the truck. Not helping. Well, he, just, he explained it when he invented that tool. Cars were running a lot smaller wheels, and as the size of wheels has increased, they had to increase the size of the frame in order to accommodate that. The problem is, when you're you know, working on a shop truck with 16-inch wheels that's been lowered, you may have some clearance issues. The fix for that is, they sell longer pins, and the pins stand the tool further away from the vehicle so that you can get that increased angle, you can get that 20 degrees. He actually sent me a set of those longer pins so the, th the tool will actually work on the truck now. So that's pretty cool. The first thing we're gonna do, now that we've got the truck level, is we're gonna use the laser level, the Bosch laser level, and a permanent marker in order to find the center line of these wheels. And why we find the center line is because during the caster, measurement, you're going to be turning the wheel left and then turning the wheel right, and you're going to be measuring at both of those turned positions. And we want to make sure that this smart camber gauge is touching the wheel at the same spot no matter which way it's turned. That's going to give us a more consistent number. It's going to give us a more accurate reading. So in this case, we drop a laser line right through the center of the wheel. And once we've located the center of the wheel using the laser level, we mark it with a permanent marker. Now, if you have any doubts about the finish on your wheel uh, or damaging that wheel, use a piece of tape instead. Uh, but in my case, I've got chromed metal wheels. I can wipe those marks off with some brake clean, so I don't have to worry about that. If you're working on a high-end Mercedes or a car with like painted rims, I wouldn't go after it with a marker. I would probably use a tape mark. Once you've done that, get right on it. Camber is easy. Negative camber is when the top of the wheel is pointed in towards the center line of the truck. Positive camber is when the top of the wheel is away from the center line of the truck. Now I know this truck has way too much negative camber. It's pointed in way too much. I had set it up that way originally because I wanted it to handle better now that the suspension's been lowered. I like to go around corners fast. I like on ramps. I do a lot of driving with this truck. The thing that I found though was that camber, too much negative camber, actually induces a side to side push. And if you're not on a racetrack and you're on public streets with potholes, every time you hit a pothole, one tire lifts and the other tire pushes and this truck was skating back and forth. Very unnerving, not what I want. I want to take that out. I want to get back to a number that's somewhere within spec. I still want some aggressive negative camber, but not so much that I have adverse tire wear or adverse handling when I'm driving it day to day. So let's see where we start off at. Dropping her in. I've got my pin set up so that there's good pressure between each edge of the rim. Not so much that I'm bending the pins, but enough that, I mean, the gauge will actually pretty much stay there by itself. So I'm at one degree of negative camber. And that's just too much for the street. For this truck, it may be okay for your vehicle. And adding negative camber will actually help cornering. But in real environments, you can see negative side, side effects. So I'm going to take that in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to try to get us closer to like 0 0.6, 0 0.5. And I think that's actually going to be a better result for this truck for the kind of driving that I do. Now that we've got an initial camber reading, we're going to check caster. Caster is important. Caster is the line that the wheel rotates around, the imaginary line that you draw through the upper and lower ball joint. I want to put as much positive caster into this steering system as I can. American cars have a lot of power steering assist. The steering tends to be numb. Adding positive caster will actually take out some of that numbness. It will give you back some road feel, which is something that for me, well, I enjoyed that. I want that. But remember, the catch is that as you increase or decrease caster, uh, you're affecting that camber measurement that we took. And if we get too much camber, it's not going to handle well. So we got to be careful. It's a balancing point. All right, well, let's try this. Let's see if we can actually get a good measurement out of it. The first thing I'm going to do is line up my paper template with the center of the wheel. I'm going to make sure that my paper template is parallel to this side edge of the top tile, because that's the tile that I'm going to be using as my reference. And 
And the first measure I'm going to take is I'm going to turn the wheel in towards the center line of the vehicle. So I'm setting my laser line. All right, I'm going to start up the truck. I'm going to steer the wheel in 20 degrees, use the gauge to take my measurement. Then I'm going to steer back the other way 20 degrees, and again, take my measurement. And we use those two numbers to calculate what caster is. Now, obviously, it's a lot easier if you've got an extra set of hands around to help you with this. Somebody can steer while somebody watches the template. All right, turn it in 20. Good. All right, back to center. And 20 the other way. Good. And center. All right, shut it down. That's it. Now what we're going to do is take the numbers that we got, go back to the bench, plug them into our formula, and see what our caster is. If both measurements are negative, then subtract the small number from the large number. What? Hold on. All right, I've started off with an initial setting with as much uh, positive caster built into this as I can. Like I said, the positive caster is going to give it a good steering feel. It's got to be balanced side to side, and it also has to put me in a range where my camber is where I want it. Now, don't fret. I know this sounds really complicated. It's not. On most vehicles, you're only, if you're lucky, going to have a camber adjustment. So it's as easy as getting in there and moving that one bolt to set the camber number that you want. You won't have to go through all this. I got to do a little balancing act. Eh, it's okay. It's some trial and error. I took the wheel off so you could see what I was doing, but that means that when I set it back down, I'm going to have to jounce that suspension, make sure that I, I introduce the, the right ride height into the suspension again, and then uh, check my numbers and make adjustments from there. Again, it's an iterative process. I'm going to have to do this a couple of times, but once I get this side in where I want it, I, I go to the other side, I do the same process, I make sure the numbers match my caster, my camber, and then when I'm done, things are going to drive great. In this case, I want to win this bet. I, want to, I don't want to have to buy the pizza. I want Steve to buy the pizza. So I'm going to take my time, get this right, and then, uh, and then roll this down to the rack. All right, that's three different alignments using three different methods. Let's get this thing down to Certified Automotive Solutions and check our numbers.
Well, that was a ton of work. Yes, it was. But it turned out all right. Yeah, yeah, our, our cars drove reasonably straight. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we nailed the pre-alignment thing. Yeah. I think we proved that in your own garage, doing what we did, you can get your car lined up pretty darn good after you've done a major repair. And again, if you get on the rack pretty good, when you come off, you should be awesome. So the long anchor tow plates uh, work pretty well. They definitely gave me the, the tow that I, I needed to get the car back on the road. And it, it may be a little bit difficult for two people to, for a single person to do the tow plates by themselves, because you need one person on each side of the car. I was really impressed with the Watkins Smart Camper Gauge. That thing worked great. I mean, I know my numbers, my caster was out compared to what factory was, but I had set it that way. And if you look at my numbers side to side, my caster and camper were right where I wanted them. The ART laser string, it's so easy to set up. I mean, compared to like the, the whole string alignment with the jack stands and stuff. I mean, yep. set up's a couple of seconds, right? You set the thing against the wheel, it shoots the line. There's a learning curve to yeah, the tools, yeah. and that's, that's what it comes down to. But all in all, I mean, yeah, my truck was driving great when I got to the rack, and and, uh, and my numbers were pretty close, so so I'm excited about that. All right. What about string alignment? String alignment would be better if it wasn't the ridiculous scenario of trying to repair a car with a piece of string. It's a lot of setup. It it's is. It's a lot of work to get that right, but the setup pays off. I think out of all of the, the methods that we tried for tow, I think string alignment, for me, I felt most comfortable with it. It was nice having that, that, that physical measurement that I could take every time. If you, if you take your time up front, you, you do the setup right, I think you can get good repeatable numbers out of that. And it's just, again, it's still a feel. You're going to have to keep trying you know, a couple of times before you, before you really uh, get the hang of it. But I think yeah. we're there. I think we got it. It's a pretty simple technique, and you don't need any expensive parts to do a string alignment. Yeah, seriously, so. right? Some strings, some jack stands, and some conduit. That's, uh, yeah. That's bucks, you know, that's, that's, that's a... That's as low budget as you go. <laughs> I, I think all in all, though, every one of our vehicles came up pretty close, a lot closer than if you just had to do it by eye, or if you just had to try to set things back where they were without any kind of measurement at all. Right. And that's going to be the key. If you want to get a good alignment coming off that rack, you, you got to put something close, you know, on, be reasonably close. on the yeah. truck before you get there. Yeah, yep. I do. Well, cool, guys. I'm starving. Let's eat this pizza. Too. Cheers. All right. Hey, you can't have that many pieces. Sure I can. I just did. Huh. All right, guys, who gets this? Hey, GarageX viewers. Need some more GarageX? Comments, complaints, questions? Check us out on the internet. Send us an email, check out our Facebook, and definitely check out our YouTube for outtakes and other goodies.